All right, guys, welcome back to another Animal Adventures with Jordan. And today we are featuring our Asian water buffalo. Now, before we get into water buffalo, buffalo specifically, I want to talk about the difference between our bison and buffalo. And as many of you know, we had a bison calf born just a few days ago, which is doing great with mom now without any issues. Quite often, though, we consider bison buffalo, and it's just incorrect. Bison are native to the United States. Your buffalo, water buffalo, you're going to find those throughout Asia, Africa, Europe, etc. So there is a difference between bison and buffalo. Bison, big hairy guys, live in the United States. Buffalo, generally water buffalo, living in uh, more wet uh, climates uh, in, in waterways and so forth. So today, speaking of the water buffaloes, now there's actually two different kinds of water buffalo. You have your river buffalo and then you have your swamp buffalo and actually there is quite a difference between the two in fact the chromosome counts are actually different and uh, now you're getting in trouble here the chromosome counts are different so they're actually two different uh, distinct species here now uh, speaking on a conservation level uh, the wild Asian water buffalo is actually endangered all right there's very few of them actually left in the wild and that's the pure genetic bloodlines of that wild uh, buffalo type but on the other hand, and I mean the numbers are down to like 4,000 left, that's how low. But on the other hand, we have the domesticated Asian water buffalo like you see here, which is Wanda and Wallace. Now these guys here, they number up into like the 130 some odd million of them living throughout the world. And it's said that they're actually the most relied upon domestic animal on earth. Whether or not that's true, I'm not certain, but it could make sense considering their wide range of where they're located. Now, obviously in the wild, the Asian water buffalo come from Asia, but you can actually find water buffalo being used in the domestic uh, nature throughout Asia, throughout the Mediterranean regions, the Middle East, and also the United States and even Australia. So they are quite a versatile animal, and we'll explain some of the uses here shortly. Before we do that, we'll talk a little bit of anatomy on these guys. Now, a water buffalo can reach anywhere from six to eight feet long. It's a very, very long animal with very short, stout legs, big, heavy chested body, and big hips in the back here. Now, they stand anywhere from about four feet up to about six feet tall, depending on which species you have. And in addition to that, they can easily achieve a thousand pounds, but even up to about 2,000 pounds. So that's one ton of big, big animal. Now, You'll see here on the front we have our horns, and that's a good way to de determine if you're dealing with a swamp or a river buffalo. The different species can be, uh, I guess, identified by the way those horns grow. And if I remember correctly, your rivers uh, curl down and back up to a spiral, and your swamps uh, actually grow out and then curve back. Very distinctly and very different. When you see a lot of remake movies of like Vietnam War and so forth, those are those more domesticated swamp buffalo they're using for those films. So you can probably identify some of them uh, through that for visual reference. Now, uh, what we're gonna talk about now, I guess is more or less that body and how it's used in the water. These guys are actually quite at home in the water. Your rivers are gonna like much deeper water. Your swamps generally like more shallow water. Now, although they're a big animal, just like a hippopotamus, they are quite agile in that water and are quite at home with it. Now, not only do they enjoy the water for obvious reasons of, of just, uh, I guess, enrichment of, of being happy in there, but it's also because it helps them thermoregulate their body temperatures. Now, quite often it can get very, very hot and humid in those Asian environments, and they are using uh, these bodies of water or even mud wallows to help them cool off. So if there's a water buffalo in a space where there is not an actual natural body of water, they will use these big horns here to actually rut and create a mud hole or a wallow, like I said, and go in there, cover themselves with mud, cooling that body and also keeping the bugs off of them. Now what we're going to do is talk about some of the way these animals are used, the domestic water buffalo. So first things first, obviously they are a source of meat, they're a source of protein for many of the people that rely on them. But there's much more than that. They can also be milked, and in fact I believe it's true mozzarella cheese is made from water buffalo milk. That milk is very, very rich, it's very high in fat, very different than our domestic dairy cattle. In addition to that, they're also used for their leather, their skin products, and also they're considered the tractor of the east. As you know, these guys can be a very resourceful farm instrument or tool in uh, many different cultures. Now, they think that the Asian populations actually use these guys for working in their rice paddies and fields because they're very wet. And these short legs, large hooves, and the way their legs are jointed make them uh, very agile where many other animals like uh, horses would get stuck in that mud. The water buffalo are able to continue and without twisting their ankles or knees and so forth. So very interesting thing on that. And they believe they've been domesticated about like four or 5,000 years ago. So that's how long ago this relationship goes back with humans and working with one another. 
Now, Wanda and Wallace here, they've been with us, I think, since our second year, maybe our third year. So just like our bison just produced a calf, this is another one of those projects where we've watched these young calves grow up into pretty good sizable adults. Now, here we are at about age three when they sexually mature. So we are expecting some calving here hopefully this season, maybe next season. Now, the gestation on these guys, we're looking at somewhere about 300 to 330 uh, some odd days, and they do produce a calf. Now those calves will stay with mom, and these herds are generally made up of moms, their offspring, and generally one big solid, or should be one big bull, dominant bull. Now the young male calves will kind of branch off into their little bachelor groups, and then eventually establish their own herd with their own uh, females. So hopefully in some time here, we'll welcome a new water buffalo calf. Now neatly enough, water buffalo don't always just have that black or brown coloring. You can see mine down here has a little bit of a white socking to it as well. Sometimes also they'll have this white mark across right across the chest down here. And that's another way you can identify the rivers from the swamps also. And of course, there is some albinism that occurs where you actually get a white water buffalo, just like you might hear of a white bison. So anyway, on that note, I think it's gonna wrap up what we have today on our guys. Tune in again on Thursday. We'll feature another animal here at the park. What will it be? We don't know, but it will of course be wild. Take care.